crazy bit of madness we got over here with this Nintendo Wii collection that we have right before you. Now we're going to take a little bit of a look at everything we have here, and is it still worth collecting here in 2018? So, stay tuned. Yes, here we are back on Retro TV with the Nintendo Wii's collection that we have here in our studio. Now, this collection you see here behind me uh, kind of came along when the Nintendo Wii was new and everyone went crazy for us, didn't we all? Now, I'm a big retro game collector myself and I collect anything from the 2600 all the way up to now. However, I'm not one of those serious collectors that needs every single game in every catalogue and every console ever made. Just the consoles that I really like. For instance, Sega Mega Drives, N64s, and so on like that. But today the Nintendo Wii came along and this here, we've been, I've been pulling this out of the dust cupboard as it's been stored away for such a long time. And I think it's time to revive it and see if it is worth collecting here in today's world of 2018. The Nintendo Wii sold over a million units worldwide and the reason they did it is because of their new control system that no one had ever seen before which is the uh, Nintendo control stick and nunchuck device. Yes, no one had ever played games like this before by throwing sticks and wobbling them around to play your games. Now, Nintendo Wii got pretty famous and popular for its Percivals, the amount of ways you could play your games. For instance, to take this and to turn it into a steering wheel, a gun, a guitar, whatever it may be, and that's what I think Nintendo Wii got really famous for. So let's start at the bottom here with what we've got here. Now here's my original unit, the Nintendo Wii of course, I got this in 2006 on launch date, played it a bit, downloaded some games and then off it went back to the loft after the fab wore down a bit. Now I've kept this back in its box in all its glory with all its wrapping and everything, so this is still in pretty mint condition today. However, everything I've got on, here, on the hard drive here I've transferred over to the Nintendo Wii U as that plays all the Wii games too, so I don't need two consoles out, but I want to keep this one wrapped in this box. Now these today in the UK can go for as low as £10 nowadays, yes, they are dirt cheap. Now of course for 10 quid you ain't going to buy much for that, you probably won't buy, you probably won't get these with it, the controllers, you'll probably get some unit that's being thrashed about a bit, missing a door or two. Anyway, you can find really good ones from £40 upwards to £100 box as well. So if you are collecting for the Wii and you want a good unit, look for the boxed ones and everything in it because that shows the person who had it has looked after it. Moving on. Now, of course, let's look at the Nintendo licensed products. Here we've got the Wii Zapper with crossbow training. Yes, this was uh, one of the first early bits that came along with uh, adapting your Wii remote controller. And in the box, you got a big piece of plastic. And of course the game inside. Yeah. Now here it is, an empty bit of plastic with some doors on it. Now this is a clever bit of kit. They made it so you can put your Wii remote in there without the rubbery thing. And the nunchuck on the back. And to turn it into a gun. Very clever. Now, the world's their oyster, they said. We could do anything with this. But anyway, that's what you got, was just a cheap bit of plastic. This one here was licensed, though, by Nintendo. After that, you got onto the Chinese third party Percivals, which came out in the millions on anything. God, they made golf clubs, crazy bats, you name it. They're still out there today. Mm. Moving on. Next big thing that came for the Wii here we've got in our collection is the Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock. Now, of course, Guitar Hero 1 and 2 came before that, but it's all the match the same thing. The only thing different was the game included inside with different songs. As you see on the back, you've got your Liz Paul guitar, plugged your Wiimote into there. And you also had some face plate, uh, face plate covers as well, and to play your favourite rock legends songs. Yes, this was also revolutionary at the time, because at the time, no one had ever come up with something like this. And that worked. 
A lot of Percival's in the past just didn't work, but this worked and it sold, again, probably millions of these units. They did well. Coming along pretty much at the same time after that was the DJ Hero. Now this is DJ Hero 2, of course the second one in the ranks. And uh, I don't believe there were many games for this. Maybe two. Right, that one. And the first one that came with it. I don't think any more came for it. I think this was at the end of Nintendo's lifespan and this was a last push to sell crazy stuff for it. This one here I think was, uh, we originally it was like 50 quid from HMV. And I think I got it for like a tenner because I couldn't sell them at the time. Uh, used this a couple of times but it's pretty much mint in box. So it's barely used just like the guitar. Uh, again, all these stuff come along at the time when I was going off Nintendo and weren't collecting anymore. Uh, other crazy stuff, you had your Wii Emotion Plus controllers which came in there and also came packaged with the Wii Sports Resort. Also got this pretty much at the end of Wii's life, which is a brand new uh, Wii Classic controller there. Still unboxed and sealed. I don't think I even opened this even for you. But uh, I think I'll keep it in a box now because uh, I don't really need to open it. Because I, I use the Wii U now to do things. The biggest other craze at the time was the Wii Fit with the fitness board. Now I haven't been able to pull my original Wii Fit board out because it's still up in the loft. And, I don't want to go back out there and get it. But here is a third party one that I didn't realise that we got at the time. And I'm not too sure. This one's made by Crown. And this one is compatible with Wii. It doesn't have the same shape, but very same. Uh, this one here is also still sealed, so uh, it's like brand new. But uh, whether it works as well as the other board, I don't know. Now let's move on to some of the other robust stuff that you don't often hear nowadays. First of all, we've got the Wii U Draw. Now, I think this was aimed at families and young children. As you open up the box, you have a tablet here, which you plug your re Wii re remote into there, and you don't need an untuck for it. And it has a lot of crazy programs on there, like colouring books, uh, be your own artist, and so forth like that. You can draw dogs, cats, and anything you want. Maybe your crazy granny you can draw on this thing too. Um, on the back it shows a family there having a lot of fun drawing at the time. Uh, but anyway, I've tried this out myself and there's a couple of program programs on there that are okay and it does work. I mean, it was made by THQ which, uh, quite frankly, this product actually made them bankrupt because they made versions for the uh, PlayStation and Xbox and those two did not take off at all, but this one worked the best. So, coming across this nowadays, there's still plenty of them out there, but not as many as they used to be. So if you are collecting them, they are going rather cheap. I got this for five quid with a bunch of games. So, uh, and it does work. Now, the crazy stuff at the time is the Nintendo keyboard. This is the power board, which was compatible with Wii. Now, Nintendo did bring out their own style of keyboard but you know what I only ever saw it once to be honest I don't think it was a big seller uh, I think the third party companies got more out of it than they did uh, I could be wrong but I'm not too sure I don't know much about it but this one came along at the time and it has an, um, a Bluetooth adapter so you can connect it to the internet and hey go watch some YouTube on it or surf the internet so there we go that's sealed in a box well not sealed no that's been open yeah, that's been open there and of course we've all seen these, the sound station, power stations, whatever you want to call them. These charge up your Wii remote with battery packs like that, instead of using batteries. And this one's not too bad, this has got some really good sound on it. You put your Wii in the middle, it's got blue light so it matches it. And it's not a bad little unit this one. Uh, it's good for, you know, it looks good on your shelf and that, but hey, there we go, it wants to fall over. Uh, but there were plenty of variants of this that came along at the time. Right, let's move on. Now, we're not going to do any unboxings here today on the show because I'm sure you've seen hundreds of videos on unboxing most of this stuff before. And it's nothing we haven't seen before. It's a Nintendo Wii in a box. There we go. But anyway, let's move on to some of the mo uh, to one of my most favourite Percivals of the collection here, which is the Capcom Ultimate All-Stars joystick or arcade stick as they call it yes this bad boy now i have to say these are rising in value because i think this is one of the the rarest personals that you can get for a, 
Um, and it does come with the Capcom Ultimate All-Stars game, as you see here. Now this works really, 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 really well with this one. So uh, let me just show you here, as I have it out the box, how big this beast is. Oops, here we go. And it's a beast, yes, but it's made like that to stay stable on the table while you're fighting away with your enemies. And it does work really well. This one here is made by Mad Cats. And they make loads of these. They've been making stuff like this for years and years and years for different styles of computer game consoles and so forth. Uh, this does work very well with that one. It also works well with any game that is um, gamepad compatible with any of these games. So any of the racing games, Mario Kart, uh, the Sonic Racers and stuff like that, you can actually use this with it. So you've got to experiment with it though, because not a lot of games did come out for their stick, especially fighting games on the Wii. I do believe Mortal Kombat came out with it as well as Street Fighter, uh, but I have not seen those around that. But anyway, this, this one here is getting hard to come by, so if you do see it in the wild and you are collecting, do pick it up, especially in the box, because one day these may be very hard to come by. So that's just some of the Percivals out there. There are hundreds of thousands of them. I mean, I've got a big case full of them here with all the bats and crazy stuff that came with it. Even fishing rods for the Sega Bass games. Okay. Now let's talk about some of the games I've got here in front of me. Um, they come in many, many varied forms. Of course, you have your typical Nintendo game party games here. You know, game lot. We've got Game Party 3, we've got Wii Play, Rums Brick Bowling, yes, a Merry Christmas game, yeah. Uh, and Carnival Mini Golf, just to name uh, some of them to showcase off what the Wii controller and Nunchuck could do. They made plenty of those games and they did actually work really, really well. Some of them were pretty crap, uh, to be honest, and some of them, well, you just thought, why on earth did you make this for? But some of them did work really, really well. You got a fish to the mountain. Now, these Stungler games today can range seriously anywhere from um, here in the UK, a pound, anywhere upwards, because they're at the bottom of the barrel at the moment. And, but the, the thing is, they are rising at the moment, especially the Wii Sports, I've noticed. Now, as you see here, this one here, the original one that came packaged with the Wii, uh, this is actually still holding a little bit of value, believe it or not, up to like about a 10 pounds. Probably on eBay you can get cheaper than that, but this one here is on the rise uh, because it was so popular and it was so fun to play. Now it is a, a very good game that they made that was a, a bundling game. Who could say more? Now of course you've got your Wii Fits and your Wii Fits Plus to work with the balance board and your fitness games and actives and stuff like that. Then you had Just Dance games. Just Dance 2, Just Dance 3. Anything that can... Uh, yeah, be compatible with the Wii Fit board and to keep you fit in the living room. So, plenty of those out there still on the market. And again, they range from anywhere. God, Wii Fits, can, you can pick it up for like 20 pence over here in the UK. It is dirt, dirt, dirt cheap. Uh, plenty of active games out there. Now, unless you're a big, vivid collector of all the active games out there, now's the time to buy them because they're worth absolutely nothing. Now let's move, move on to some of the more obscure games here. Now let's start with this one here, of course. Now this one also links with the EU Draw. Now we've got some here, we don't have the whole collection. Now let's just see, we've got the EU Draw Studio. Uh, EU Draw Studio Instant Artist. So that's like a second one of that. And we got uh, Dodd's Big Adventure. Uh, Disney's Princess. All made by THQ and uh, SpongeBob SquarePants, Squiggle Pants. Yes, I've not played any of these, so I can't actually comment on what they're like. I've only used the original uh, draw program just to see and test it out to see what it was all about. Uh, these are coming up again. Again, these are worth little to nothing at the moment. If you do find them, now is a good time to start collecting them. If you wanna, if you actually do want the whole collection. So moving on. Now, of course, with all the weirdness games, we've got the DJ Hero 2 series and DJ Hero 1, 
plus you have your band hero too. Now going along with what came out after this, of course there was a drum kit and a band kit that came out with it, and it was a complete kit that you could buy to set up your own band in your own living room. Wow, did they not stop with this stuff? I think that was the last one. Uh, I don't have that, and I think I kind of faded out for that, was buying any more at the time. But it, it, it still exists out there, uh, especially for collectors if you're into buying the whole band kit. Um, they just went crazy. Here's, here's a game that is becoming rarer now, and it's very pricey, which is the Beatles Rock Band, actually. Now, I've, I've noticed this going for about 40 to 50 pounds here in the UK, and it is rising, because uh, I've not seen it that often. Uh, and again, if you see it in the wild, do grab a copy of that, because I think this is one of the most ones that will be collectible in the future. And of course, Guitar Hero 3, Guitar Hero War, World Tour, it just goes on and on with all that stuff, and again, those type of games aren't really worth that much. Okay, let's look at some, um, just some bits and pieces of games. We've got Indiana uh, Jones, Star of Kings. Of course, Mario and Sonic at the Olympics 2012. Now, I think this was bundled with the blue system that came out uh, in the 2012 era for the families, for a family system. Deadly Creatures, I think this is an underrated game, to believe it or not. It's pretty fun to play as a giant spider, killing off other creatures. Very weird concept, but not a little bit of fun to play with. So, yeah, again, I don't often see this one come up in the wild, so if you do see it, maybe to grab it. It's a lot of fun to play with. Uh, you've got your Land Rover 4x4 off-road, typical driving game, nothing uh, nothing really to say about it. Mad Dog McGree, Glum Singer's back. Yes, um, you can use your Wii Zapper or your moat with that one. Um, I can't recall, I mean I haven't played this for so long I can't even recall what it was like. I think it was just a bit of fun really. And of course your Link's Crossbow. Shooting games are the fun. Now what have we got over here? We've got some other obscure games that don't often come up, like Deer Drive. Yes, it's a game about shooting deers. Yeah, weird concept, that one. And of course this one, this is pretty regular, big bass fishing too, if you like your fishing games. Winter Sports Olympics 2009, this works okay and it's a bit of fun to play. But again, you know, it, it does require your we fit fitness ball to do it as well. Uh, Wonder World Amusement Park, another game that can be into the uh, catalogue of fun games to play with your Wii boot. And GI Jockey Wii. Be your own jockey. I've never actually played this, I think we bought it and didn't even bother with it. But then again, it was only like a pound at the time. I think it was at a flea market or something like that. But yeah. However, some of these games are starting to get hard to come by, even the, the weird games. And that's what the thing is, it's always stuff like this that you don't see often, uh, which in the future may gain more money uh, than what your you know, Mario and Sonics will do, because they're common. Uh, some of those are not common. And of course you've got your sports games. Uh, well, we all know sports games from any, any console is uh, they're worth absolutely nothing. And you're absolutely right, because here we've got all the Tiger Woods series from when it started. Six, uh, seven, eight, uh, nine, ten, uh, eleven. But I think out of all that, if you're a sports collector, that's all they're good for. But again, right now, they're worth not even like 50 pence to buy. They're dirt, dirt cheap, even if you're only collecting them. Now I find the, the better sports one out of that, the best golf one that was made, which was the Masters here. Now I've played this, you know, I don't know if I haven't played all of those ones because they were just bought and shoved in a box, but this one I have played and it works really well. That's the 2012 Tiger Woods one. Um, again, this one does come up, you know, it, it's still cheap at the moment, so, but I think it's the better one of the series. Right. Now, some of the better ones we got here, of course, in the collection is, of course, the Ultimate All-Stars Beat-Em-Up game. Very good to play. Of course, your Mario Kart Wii. Can't go wrong with that, can you? Put it in, have hours of fun. You got your F1 2009. Now, I know in America this one's a very hard one to come by, but over here it's pretty common and pretty cheap, but fun to play. 
Now we've got Dead Rising, Chop Till You Drop in the Shopping Mall. This one, again, was a bit of a, a first person shooter and it was just a bit of fun at the, at the time, beating up zombies and stuff like that. Now, of course, Sonic Sega All-Star Racing. Now, this, along with uh, Mario Kart Wii, is very good, but I think this one's a little bit better than that one, as it gives you more variety and options with the game as well. So that's a lot of fun to play as well. House of the Dead Overkill, that's a good blast if you just want to blow some more zombies out of the out of the way and have a good few hours going of that. So that's again that one's not a common one to come up with nowadays. Uh, it's still available on eBay and stuff, but you don't often see it in game shops anymore. Same with this one, House of the Dead Tunes Free. Now I love this one. I, I grew up with it on the on the Sega Saturn, I believe. Is when it first came out, and again, it's just a good zombie blast and a good game at that to get if you can get it in collection. Another good game is Ghostbusters. Yes, now this came out in two different variations: the PlayStation and Xbox one, and this one. Now this one was criticised for being a bit more cartoonish, uh, along with the, the other one was more realistic. Now apart from that, the gameplay was pretty much spot on with both games, apart from the cartoonish style. But I think that was just because of the power of the Wii. It could not give any more than what the other consoles would give. However, this is still a very good Ghostbusters game for the Wii, and it's still very enjoyable and workable. Then we've got Rampage, Total Destruction there, with a nice bash and trash one. Survival, and there we go, we've got that one too. And of course, many, many more good ones that I don't have with me, which is Super Mario, uh, Wii and stuff like that. Now other ones that you got here, as you might do, if you're collecting in your path there, you might be seeing boxed versions of games. Now if you do, I think they will be on the rise in the future. Complete box kits, for instance, you've got your Zumba packs over there, you've got your Glee packs here with karaoke and microphones, and of course you have know, Wii Sports Resort with the um, motion controller inside there. Now I think they'll be the more they'll, they'll, they'll be the collectibles in the future, all boxed ones as well as fantastic games here. So plenty of games to choose from. Now yes. I don't have the biggest collection in the world and this all stopped probably around 2012-2013 when, you know, life took over and I was uh, on to other better things. But anyway, I dug this out the other day just to see exactly how much of this stuff I've got. Now that we've had a quick look at this uh, small collection here, it is pretty big but it's also pretty small compared to some collections I've seen on YouTube that have gone completely mad. But that's okay, because I think they're onto something there. Now let's get back to that question again. Is it worth collecting Wii in 2018? And my, my answer to that is, yes it is, because A, they're as cheap as they're gonna be, because every console in its life, the 10 year age mark, becomes absolutely worth it, worthless. Now I've seen this happen, you know, years and years ago with the Sega Master System and the Sega Mega Drive and Nintendo systems. When they reached the 10 year mark, or even if they got to that far, they were worth nothing and you could find them at boot sales for peanuts. Now it's the Wii stone to do that. I think it's the seventh generation of computer game consoles. But because they're worth nothing at the moment, or absolutely not much, now is the time to pick it up because you ain't gonna spend a lot of money on this, to be honest. And maybe down the track in another five to ten years, you will definitely see prices rise because Nintendo games will always rise in value is because of the way they're made. They were made for the Wii for a special reason and a special way, and it's not like the Xbox or the PlayStation. It has its own style of gaming, and that's what people love about the Wii and possibly the Wii U as well. That one too. But yes, if you're into the collecting and you want something to collect and uh, hopefully have a good collection in the future and you don't want to spend a lot of money, now's the time to buy a original, a Wii, and keep it locked away for another 20 odd years and then you'll see what's going to happen then. And uh, some of these games are going to be so hard to find that yes, you're going to be the one that owns them. So anyway, that's it for today's show and a quick look at my collection. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next program. We'll see you then. Happy collecting. Goodbye.